Okay, let's go. Um, welcome everybody. Um, welcome anybody who's going to join us online and afterwards and, and uh, join, join in and watch and listen and hopefully learn. Um, my name is Mark Reed, and I am uh, on furlough currently from the British Film Institute. So I'm just here as somebody who's interested in film education rather than um, formally uh, through my employer. Um, and we're, con we're convening uh, a, a conversation um, for the Film Education Journal to support uh, and uh, maybe get some, some, some interest and some context around a very interesting article that we're just about to publish by Mirjana Borcic, who is a Slovenian academic and film educator of many years experience. Um, one of the things that we want to do in the Film Education Journal is to bring voices uh, to, to, who have expertise and experience to share, um, but whose work might have not have reached a wide audience, certainly a wide international audience. Um, and for us, that means translating uh, pieces um, from lots of other languages, uh, in, particularly into English, and then publishing that so that so that as many people as possible can engage. Um, so Mariana has has written. Um, we translated a piece by Mariana, uh, which is partly what would you call it in German? A kind of Bildungsroman, a, a, a kind of um, formation of her interest and background in film education which goes back to the early 1960s it's it's quite a fascinating uh, and, and inspiring story but she also towards the the later part of her piece she offers um, people some some expertise and some practical guidance on how to manage conversations with children and young people about film um, and when we saw this, uh, and, and Petra Slatinsek from Kinnebor in Slovenia was, was, was great in bringing our attention to Mariana, um, we thought this was really something of practical use and practical interest to, uh, to a, a wider audience. Um, so we, we, we have a, a, a panel um, of conversation, um, and I'm, just, I'm going to introduce our three uh, conversationists or interlocutors to to say something about themselves they are in alphabetical order Alejandra Backman um, from Austria uh, Charlotte Gieser from the Danish Film Institute and Nuria Edelman from Abao Coup uh, in Barcelona um, and it, between them they have in, enormous kind of wealth and experience um, and expertise but but also uh, curiosity and uh, and engagement and, and generosity, I think, in, in listening and, and, and sharing with uh, with other people um, around aspects of film education. So, in that order, I'm just going to ask Alejandro and then Charlotta and Nuria to say a few things about themselves and their and their background trust, and then we'll we'll get into some uh, some, some meatier parts of, of, of conversation. Okay. Um, so, hello Mark, uh, hello everybody. Um, thank you for the introduction, Mark, and thank you for the invitation to participate in the discussion. Um, I will keep my introduction very short. Um, so, my name is Alejandro Bachmann. I work as a teacher for films, so I teach, um, basically start teaching um, pupils for, by the age of five, and I uh, also teach at university, so it's in that kind of range that I that I actually work as a film teacher. I uh, write a lot on film and I um, make film programs for um, museums and film festivals. Um, so I'm, yeah, involved in film in a in a uh, in some different ways. Um, I was head of the department um, for education research and publications at the Austrian Film Museum for ten years. And um, while I was there, um, together with the British Film Institute and together with Mark Reed, we published the English version of the Cinema Hypothesis by Anna Bergala. And um, apart from that, um, I think there is not so much that I can say at the moment. Thank you, Alejandro. So uh, we hand over to Charlotte. Yes, hello and thank you all. Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, it's generous of you. I'm looking forward. Um, I have been at the Danish Film Institute for many years. I started as a film consultant um, providing uh, financial support to new films for children and young people in Denmark. Uh, and then I was in um, 
one of the people starting a new department for children and young people at the Film Institute. It's now almost 20 years old. Uh, and five years ago, uh, after starting that department and sort of having it established, we are like 10 people there. Uh, I'm working as a special advisor for the department and I also work on my on behalf, you can say, as a strategic consultant for film environments in Middle East and in Africa. And I think that has given me, I'm very curious to work with people in emerging countries as well, because it's very different from what we do in Denmark and Scandinavia in general. And then it has been a great pleasure to work with Mark now for many years in the European context also reaching out to the world. So that is a brief introduction to me. Thank you. Hello, hello Mark and everybody. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to see you and be here like sharing experiences in this in this period. So I'm Nuria Eidelman. I come from the nonprofit cultural organization Abawapu based in Barcelona, as Mark said, and we started 15 years ago, uh, the International Program of Film Pedagogy Cinema and Course, which is developed within the school hours with children from 4 to 18, and, and we work specifically more in a deep way from like 9 to 18 years old. And we work with teachers and filmmakers, like in, in, in long term workshops, linking film viewing and filmmaking. And based on the concerns of, of the students, the young students, we started a European project called Moving Cinema, like six years ago. And we asked ourselves about the ways to create strong bonds for young people with cinema beyond their school life. So it was a big question of young people, what do we do after school or after the workshop? So it was also like our concern. And there we work together with teachers, with festivals, cinematics, film theaters, and video on demand platforms. And I could say that also in these 15 years like journey, we, we also work like in a very deep way. The, the teacher training is very important for us. It's a very important strength of work. And also the, the dynamization of screenings with children and your people. Fantastic. Great to have you. Thank you all very much. Um, I, I thought we would go straight in at the deep end, really, <laughs> rather than a gentle introduction. Um, and the, the, um, Mirjana set, has something quite provocative early on in her, in her article, on page three of her article, when she says, only a film literate viewer who fully comprehends the uniqueness of film expression is capable of understanding and considering the artistic value of a film. Um, and I know that you've all in, in various ways worked with quite young children and you champion the capacity of young children to engage with even quite complicated complex film. Um, I just wonder whether anybody has a response to that in particular. Do you have to do you have to have a film studies PhD in order to be able to truly appreciate um, a piece of film? And maybe if you if you don't think so, then give us some examples of, of work with uh, with younger children where you can get that um, excitement uh, and response out of younger children. And I think maybe. So do I just start? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, go. Um, it's interesting that you chose uh, this very quote because um, to me, um, what um, what she has written, basically nearly every sentence I read, I totally agreed um, with it, and I totally liked what she had to say, and it was very. Um, actually amazed by her capacity to articulate what a film teacher has to do because uh, everything she's describing, I think this is the hardest part of teaching film to describe what you actually do as a teacher and how you try to deal with the conversation happening. And now you chose the only sentence, I think, um, in which I totally disagree because I, um, I do think that it helps to know um, a lot of films, to have seen a lot of films, to have thought about a lot of films. But I also think that there is 
something very intuitive about cinema and that um, quite a deep understanding and insight into cinema and into how it works can come from a very fresh viewer as well. And I think this is kind of the experience one gets, especially when one works with very young children and, for example, experimental films. When they watch these films, often the first thing they have to say without knowing any form of experimental cinema often gives us a deeper insight into these films and what they do with us than um, any scholar could um, give me. It's interesting um, how, yes, how we both kind of picked out a sentence because I, I love, you know, everything in the, in the piece, most of what's in the piece, but then that really stuck out uh, as something I thought, well, mate, you know, I'm not, not quite so sure about that. So, yeah, um, Charlotta, because um, I, I, I can't see all of the um, video windows, so I can't see if people are raising their hands. Um, although I can see Nuria's put a hand up. Go on, Nuria. Yes, well, in fact, we really love the article and discovering it was great. And I agree with all that you say. And in fact, maybe because we, we love so much the article and we really feel close to to her approach. So I, I think I understood it in a different way what she was saying. I understood that she was talking like about two steps. I mean, cinema has like a, an incredible capacity to touch us, to affect us in a very direct way, uh, to involve us in the stories or in the images, experimental or narrative. So this is a very huge value because uh, you are young people and also very young people are always like very attached to cinema and for for us it's like a first step but then it comes a second step which is great like with cinematographical experience in your life and by the way in which these experience occur and it's the, the capacity for deep enjoyment I mean the capacity for like the deep pleasure and for us this enjoyment involves recognizing and being moved by the expressive choices, by filmmaker choices. And it involves being aware of what moves us, I mean, to be conscious of what, what is beyond the narrative or also beyond the, the first emotion of the images and the shots, the light, the camera movement, the sound, uh, the editing, the rhythm, the stillness. So for all, all that experience of cinema, we really think that it's necessary to to, to be formed in some way, I mean, to form sensitivity, or rather, rather maybe it's like to, to shape, to sharpen, sharp, sharp uh, sensitivity. And, and to, to achieve this, we really need to watch meaningful movies, and also to need, we need to acquire the ability to pay attention, full attention, I mean, to, to watch m movies in a very careful way. So I, I think she was talking about that. I mean, about the the the, the fully like enjoyment of these expressive choices. Yeah, I I, it, yeah. It, I think thinking about the uh, it's nice a sharpening of film sensibility or developing a film sense yeah. as a series of steps, um, which which be, which can begin as as early as possible, as young as possible, yeah. Um, yeah. so that we so that we've never finished. Um, engaging with film and learning from film, um, but it but it, it develops uh, uh, over, over time and enriches and, and reinforces itself. Charlotte, I, because I can't see you on my uh, in my window, I'm I'm just going to give invite you in, uh, and to, if you've got something to add at that at that point. Yes. Okay. You can see the hand is up, or is that working? Well. I can only see two okay. people at a time. So if you ah, put your okay. hand up and I can't see you, then I can't see your hand. It's a, it's a, it's okay. a funny, it's a funny okay. I can see you've got two hands up there though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I want to, um, um, I think in general, when I read this article, it was like coming back home. It's like, in a way, it's so old school. It's something we knew years ago. And then we sort of forgot. I mean, this is very generally speaking, and from a Scandinavian point of view, I think film education at some point has become very instrumental. It has to be used uh, according to curriculum, according to 21st skills, sensory skills, according to whatever subject you have in school. 
uh, I mean, it's this whole Burgala uh, discussion as well. So it's really nice to see this pure, pure opinion on how young people create meaning by sharing their impressions and all this, uh, listening to others, and then create a new meaning. I think it's very welcomed by me. And then concerning her provocative sentence, which I actually also had to read twice, um, I feel in a way she's very much right, because of course if you have been through a lot and you have a lot of cinematic experience, you might be better to express yourself among others about how you understand and analyze and reflect on this. But I totally agree with you, Nur Nuria and Alejandro, that I think every child, even the first time you see a film, of course you will be impressed by it. So when are you literate? When can you say somebody is literate? I think I have been, I have been, I just was reflecting about, she's also talking about this, uh, to discuss form and not only content. And I have been, I, I've been screening films for, for a lot of children in Africa who never went to the cinema. It was like first cinema experience. And children three years old in Danish kindergartens in rural areas and to uh, high school students in central Copenhagen. And you can ask them a question and they will all reflect and have impressions and be able to discuss this. So I think it's, yes, I agree and yes, I don't agree. I, but I think it makes them stronger, of course, in, in putting words to their experience and sharing it. So that's one of the things I, yeah. Yes, uh, that's it uh, for now. <laughs> Alejandro, um, oh, you, you had your hand up. Have you got your, is your hand up still? Um, Did you want yeah, to come I, in I, I think I would just like to connect to what Charlotte uh, just said, because I think this is somehow, there is this, I, I mean, basically uh, throughout her text, she's emphasizing experience over knowledge, right? So, mm. so, so she says um, what it is about is experiencing art and experiencing the art of cinema and going through the length of a film, the duration of a film, being moved by it and so on. And uh, the quote you mentioned kind of seems to refer to knowledge, but I also agree a little bit with what Nuria said then that maybe we have to reinterpret it a little bit in the light of everything else she says and then it is about basically um, sharpening your senses and what Charlotte also said I like the idea of being able to express what you have experienced in a film better because I think this is really to come back to the other main aspect of her article and this question of how do we talk about films this idea of being able to find the right words to express your your subjective impression of what you have seen. So to kind of communicate it for others, you have to kind of find your own language and at the same time a language that is so precise that others can understand you. And in that sense, maybe she's right with saying one has to be experienced. One has to have seen a lot of films, talked about a lot of films. She, can, can, can we pick, pick up just on that notion of experience um, as being a, a, a kind of constituent part of, of any education? It's a, it's a very powerful word. Uh, and there are, I mean, somebody like John Dewey, American pragmatist and, and, and educationalist in the mid 30s, 40, well, earlier, the first part of the 20th century, he wrote a lot about the, the importance of experience the experience that children are, are, are offered in, in, in school. Um, and maybe, um, Charlotte, when you said that we we seem to have moved so far away from the things that we knew um, because education has become more instrumental, um, are there things ab about the experience of watching and talking about film that you think uh, that, that, that Mariana is that talking about that are valuable? But this, this notion about what it is to experience cinema um, in particular. Yes, I don't know. Are you Nuria? Are you? No? I, th okay. I think just I think you just have to jump in because I um, 
I can ah, only okay. see one hand up, then that's yours, Charlotte, but it might have been from a previous previous thing. So, the, the, so this notion about what, exp, you know, what, what's a rich, what constitutes a rich film experience, a, a cinema experience? I think, um, I think something that, that, uh, that I have experienced myself often with children watching film is that if you do not uh, create this safe space for them where they feel secure to experience, uh, I mean, that's sort of step number one. Um, I think um, in my experience from Middle East and, and Africa is that often we tend to... Um, p children there are not used to be allowed to have an opinion. Like, they would never question their teacher, the film they see, the society, their families. They are just not used to put questions or ask why and have their own opinion. So I think just to take that for granted uh, is something we have to be aware about a lot uh, when it's uh, to, to have this optimal uh, c cinema experience. We shouldn't take that for granted that children are always ready to do that. You have to create that space. Um, that's one thing I want to say. And I think for Scandinavian children, it's, they have so many opinions. Their, their challenges to, I mean, they're very used to questions like, what do you feel or what is your opinion today and what do you like to do? So they will, they are very used to that, but they have a hard time listening to each other. So it's very different, I think, from culture to culture. I'm not sure if that addresses your question. Yeah, yeah, but no, that, that, some... no, it's really interesting about um, that, there, that there are cultural differences. Um, so because sometimes we imagine as film educators, if we work on a, in a kind of international setting, um, that we're trying to find the common way and the common approach and the common experience. Um, and yet we're, we're always having conversations about, well, this is you know, that might work in an Anglo-Saxon context, or this is, you know, it's different in Mediterranean cultures or in Scandinavian cultures. It, it, is that, did, Nuria Alejandro, is, has what Charlotte has said, um, in your experience of working with children, with, with young people, um, did, does, does, that, did, does that ring true for you? How, is, how easy is it to um, bring forth uh, it, it kind of impressions for, from children and young people? Nuria, you've got your hand up, you can go next. Yes. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with, with Charlotte's reflections. I mean, the, the first, uh, and also I will connect with the, our previous discussion because I think it's, it's related to, I mean, this, this possibility to open a conversation, like a, like a real open conversation where there are not like correct answers, we are not expecting something specifically, but we really can talk. It's such an important experience, and I think that's, important of course everywhere i imagine our cultural context in spain or or in, in scandinavia it's really very different but also here like in, in mediterranean countries in the school we don't have always the possibility to really talk to really express to talk about emotions and feelings and and having the conscience of this this experience is also very important i mean to have the conscience of the experience of being together talking uh, and also like in these days with this uh, situation and, and separation of uh, like uh, everyone, we really miss this possibility of talk together and to feel this experience together. And I think this is the first step of experience of film, which is very relevant. And then there's the, the second step of experience, which is the, the conscience of experiencing a film. And, and for me, it means like experiencing the, the form or the, the expressive choices of the film. I mean, as, as I was saying before, I mean, recognizing the light, the shot, the sound, etc. It makes you have a, an absolutely new experience. And then you are like it's the full experience of, of film. It was like two, two weeks ago, we had an online meeting with uh, the young programmers of Moving Cinema and Celia Rico, which is a, a Spanish film, filmmaker. 
and she said that wonderful thing. She she explained them that they are like uh, the young programmers between uh, 16 and 20 years old. And she said that for her, a film, it was like a good conversation with friends. And then she said, you go home and then the film accompanies you, grows in memory and makes you grow. And, and really, find it very inspiring this idea of film as conversation and film education or our accompaniment it's like being conscious of this possibility of, of having this conversation with film and how film it makes part of your life after this talking it's a, it's a lovely metaphor isn't it that yeah. yes that, that film is like a Although I can imagine there are some films that maybe I wouldn't want to be in conversation with for a long time and certainly wouldn't want to take them home with me. Um, <laughs> Alejandro, you've, you've got your hand raised. Maybe to just also come back what Charlotte said about this formalized teaching. Um, and, and this also connects to something in the article because um, uh, in extract one, uh, very much in the beginning, she says that there is a very strong difference between, for example, literature and, and film. And uh, uh, that is because film articulates itself through images in time, while literature articulates itself through um, words on a piece of paper. And, and I think that uh, this kind of formalized learning that we have in schools is very language-based and it's very oriented towards language. And, so and so if you take this kind of idea of of teaching and learning and apply it to film i think that it can actually um and i i would like to find a softer word but i can't now because uh, english is not my mother tongue but it kind of kills for me a uh, part of an experience if you try to formalize um, it, uh, through through things that you have basically learned by applying language uh, to things. So that is one thing. And the other thing I think that I find very interesting is that in a way, we talked about this earlier, in a way she, she says one, one can gain experience and one can become like something like a learned viewer. And at the same time, very much of what she says, I feel is about making people unlearn. And as things and that is also connected to what Charlotte says if you talk to students for example when I do a university seminar I have huge problems in um, connecting to their experience because what they do is they apply these discourses and theoretical frameworks that they have read they apply this to what they see and um, often what I want from them is the opposite it's to kind of start with the film start with your experience once we have articulated this, you can, if you want to, connect it to a theory. And so I think it's this kind of getting away from discourses and just concentrating on your perception and on aesthetics that is very important if you kind of want to talk about the cinema experience. She, Mirana does say at one point that when you have a conversation about film, she said it's, it's important that people get practiced in always anchoring what they say in the film itself and not using the film to go to other places. I, I guess that's always that's been the problem with film theory sometimes is that the film is the excuse and the theory is that you know that's that that's the kind of proper talk but when she says you know get rid of all of that make it about um, keep it rooted in the film keep the conversation rooted in the film. Charlotte you've got your yeah yeah but that that was actually one thing that also that I'm not so sure if I totally agree with her because um, I think it's very hard for children today not to relate to their own lives and to the other films that they see. I think sometimes we are too little open to include uh, their their visual experience from other media, other platforms, etc. When discussing a specific title, I think it's quite important to relate to that. Uh, at least that's my experience in Scandinavia. That it's very important if you want to discuss whatever film may be chosen by an adult uh, uh, in a, at the film institute uh, and then you you tell them, well, we want you to discuss this film. But if they can't take in their experience from their other 
the other things, films, series that they see and their life on social media, I think we limit also the conversation. And just one more example from, 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 um, from Africa. Once we, we screened a Danish film called We Shall Overcome. I think it was released in, in UK as well. And, and there were like 200 children in the room and nobody was saying anything until we asked them, okay, were you ever punished at home? And all of them raised their hands and said, yes, we've all been. And then the whole discussion started about child punishment, et cetera, blah, 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 because we related to something in their own lives. So I think this, maybe I'm not, don't understand her correctly, but I just think we should take care not to become too strict ourselves by just following what she's saying. I mean, yeah, I hope you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we've got it. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. Um, it, it's a question about being dogmatic, really, isn't it? About <clears throat> but saying too formally that you can only do it this way. Um, yeah, and, and having some flexibility for the way that we enable conversations with, with young people. N uh, Noria. Yeah, I, I think she was talking more about the fact of keeping inside the film and keeping inside our our relation with the film, but not going beyond as, as Alejandro was talking on the university uh, students, because I know it, I also teach at the university, it's a bit the contrary of the young people that start with their feeling and at the university they try to to go beyond the film, beyond the, fi the, the feelings, no? like putting in the theory. And it also happens with the teachers. I mean, in the teachers' training, uh, or when teachers organize their own like, film activities, very often they try to, to put their attention outside the film. And probably it's because they feel secure, like in the, in the subjects or in history or whatever, and always try to, to go outside the film. And, and for us, our like mission is trying to give them the confidence to really be in the film and to have a big confidence in the film and in students. And because young people are, are children, they really are able to talk about the film, starting by the feelings, with the impressions, the affective, as as Marina said, and then and then we can start asking. And then what I was saying of the second step. Uh, comes when you start asking about this moment she or he is talking about that how it was and how it was shoot or how it was the light and or how how it was made. So I, I think she's talking about this possibility of being very confident to the to the film and to the students and not trying to find the the, the, the dialogue outside. Yeah. Um. Just just on on thinking. Of because you've introduced what um, Nuria when Nuriana's talking about the kind of uh, her her system for managing those conversations and this the process you take uh, children or young people through um, and this notion of beginning with just with impressions and and, and um, uh, trying to speak as directly as possible um, we we have a a, a colleague um, who who's who's has a very um, very strong feeling uh, that when you talk to, to children about something they've watched that you should never ask them did they like it you know you should never ask the question did you like the film um, and I'm just wondering whether people you know how what, what uh, is that is something that you all agree with uh, is there a reason why that's not a good question if you if you, if you, if you think that that's also true um, so yeah Absolutely. I mean, if I, I can answer, I mean, for us, it's like the first uh, important question to have always in mind. Never, never ask that or or if they talk about that, try to go in another way, because this I like, I don't like it. It finished there and they, it's the it, you, you can't open a conversation from that. I mean, it's like closing it and it avoids reflection. It, but is, it possible, is, yeah. is, is it possible to develop a conversation from I like or I didn't like? Do, do, do. For me, for example, if, if they say, well, I, I don't like it, you start talking about what, 
what why did you don't feel well or what was what was your impression and then they start talking for example that it was very slow and then you say ah great i mean you feel the, the slowness of the film and it makes you feel strange and then you start talking about the film so when they start explaining they are talking about the film which is the the, the great thing with young people they are really able to explain what what they feel and and then you can discover with them that maybe this feeling that makes them don't like the film it's the reason also of the film and it was i mean it's the filmmaker who decided to create this feeling in one sense but i i guess uh, maybe also if you if you if you start from that pos position and then you're trying to explore why they didn't like something then they're going to feel that eventually you want them to say I liked it, you know, and that's that's why it's a, maybe it's a hard process to to to, a yeah, hard one to start yeah. with. Yeah, you know, it's very important to know that uh, one feels like very attached to a film or to another, and you can really don't feel close to this film. But we are trying to talk about how it was our experience, really, and how it is this film. So of course you can love or don't love or like and don't mm. don't like, but try to talk about the film. Yeah. It's really connected you, you with your previous question, yeah. Uh, Alejandro and Charlotte have both got their hands up. Alejandro, Net, I think yours was first. I think I would just add that uh, it basically is probably not the best way to start off um, by asking did you like it or did you not like it, but I also feel from my experience that it's often not possible to avoid um, uh, this being said because children, very young children, if they don't like it, they will tell you right away. They will not even wait for you to ask anything. They will say, I didn't like the film. And um, also 15 or 16 year olds, I think often have a strong urge to say if they didn't like something. So I think it, I agree a bit also with you, Mark, it can be a starting point. And the starting point, I think normally what I do is I try to say, okay, so you didn't, didn't like it. Let's say you were irritated. And what, what irritated you? And then I want them to explain to me what irritated them. And then I will ask others, okay, so if this was something that she or uh, he did feel irritated by, how about the others? Did you feel the same? And so I try to kind of, in lack of a better word, try to make it productive that there was something that someone didn't like. And, and because I feel that is a, a useful experience for the person who didn't like it to understand how did the others feel about something that I didn't like. So it's, it, I think it can be useful in a way. If, if I can yeah, add to what Alejandro is saying, because it's a the very important thing how how the reflection of one of them yeah, gets to the to the others. And for example, with the with the four hundred blows, which is a film that we try to watch with students always because it's, it's wonderful to share it uh, very often in the conversations when you start talking and then and then they they talk about the end of the film and there's a long conversation about almost always there's someone who raises the hand and say well at the beginning i really didn't like the end but now i'm listening to you and all the things you are saying and now i'm feeling i really love that it's like this open-ended and all these feelings you are talking about so this this is very moving the moment where a student says uh, now i realize that maybe i, I change also the appreciation or listen to you yeah i i, I had a a similar experience with with my son who watched Le Mépris because he was studying it and I I always said I really can't get on with that film I don't understand that film and he said no it's terrible it's terrible and then a, a few weeks later he said I've actually I've been reading about it and now I realize it's a masterpiece and I thought no you've, you've got it you know you've lost <laughs> you've lost your response um, because you've given in to the authority of, of the educator who's told you what what you should think um, Charlotte, you, you, you've got your hand up. Um, yeah, I, th I think my, my uh, experience is sometimes if we have many uh, students in the cinema hall and we, we, uh, we have seen the film together and then if someone, I think it's very natural for them to like or not like. I mean, also if you go to the cinema, that's the first thing you often ask each other about when coming out. So I think it's like letting the steam out of the kettle. It, it's, 
it has to be there maybe um uh, but but i feel that it's difficult for for them to be honest in their reply because if the smart girl in class she really likes it then all the other girls likes it as well i mean that might happen so but i think just get over it and then start having a more interesting conversation beyond beyond that but i but i think it might be uh, it, it might be uh, needed somehow and then I, I remember once because we started to work with very little three to six years old a lot the last three years and we had, um, we often, which you probably also do, show them the film twice because, and then the short films. And the first film, they, they are very much about liking, not liking, and all this, and what was the film about. And then we asked them to see it again, and just after, tell us what color was the film, or what was the sound of the film. I mean, very simple stuff like that to make them more attentive to what they see. And then we have a total other second conversation about the short film. So I think, I mean, even with very young children, you can have very nice discussions, even about aesthetics and form, which I'm sure you experience as well. But just get over this like face, the like, the not like face. Noria. Yeah. Noria, did you want to come back in? You got your hand up. Or is it, no, it's down again. It wasn't. Um, it, it wasn't voluntary. I mean, it was a previous. Uh, <laughs> it was an involuntary. Uh, yeah. It's because yeah. you have. Yeah, I do, uh, remember to take it down again. That's what it's we forget. Yeah. yeah, but no, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. thinking. Fine. Sorry, <laughs> about 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 what Charlotte was saying. Yeah, I was thinking about the fact that many often we for for starting the presentation or I mean before the film we also talk about the the things to we can pay attention in a way which which is a very important word and an element for us like in in discussing films the attention and also like the the dialogue it's a way to start paying attention together so the conversation it's a way to pay attention to film mm. so for that it's so important to have time for the dialogues because you need really time like to go step by step and new things arise and one one thing came to another so it's a it's a very very important to consider in school in general is the, the attention and the time which very often there's a big lack in school of time which is it's absurd because you have to have time in school and well so sometimes like film education can give time to the school time to talk time to to listen to discuss yeah but I like, can I, I ask you something? Yeah. Okay. Now I just want to ask uh, Nuria and Alessandro what, the, I mean, how many people can you have a good discussion with at one time? Because we find it, it's a big difference between having, of course, of a full theater with 300, 500 children uh, and then having a school class or a very small setting. So, uh, how do you differ between the way you discuss films in classrooms and in theaters? If you want to respond to that. <laughs> I, 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 think, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's um, hard to actually say with how many people, because it kind of depends on the group. Do the people know each other? Is it uh, six different classes sitting in the same cinema together? Are they 15? Are they 12? It's all of these things. I just can say that um, in, uh, when I used to work for the Austrian film museums, a lot of the programs we did were basically limited for 164 um, young people. And a lot of the lectures we did were actually visited by close to 150 um, young children. And even then, I felt a discussion can be had, because it's mostly then it's 10 people out of the 150 who actually really get involved in the discussion. But obviously, it's not ideal. But I still think that, for example, um, what, what Mirjana um, describes in her text can be applied to that kind of group. You kind of have to 
take 10 people and 10 people will say something and then you kind of maybe have to sort what they have said and then follow some of the elements that were mentioned and see how people go along with it. But it's definitely not ideal and the reason at the Austrian Film Museum why this was done and I think this is an, an important element to say is obviously because when you go back to the funders who give us money for film education you want to say wasn't this great? We had four and a half thousand young uh, children in our film education classes. While the truth obviously would be, you would like to say, we only had 400, but it was great because no seminar had more than 25 children and we had great discussions, but this is not how, um, how you convince a funder. So we kind of had to go this kind of crazy way of having 164 and try to make the best of it. Should, should, should we just pick up on that? The, 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 there's a question about, you know, group sizes and what the quality of experience and the time you have. Um, um, Mariana is asking this question about what's the best place uh, for this kind of film experience, this film education experience to happen. You know, you, cinema, classroom somewhere in between, third space in, in between. Um, and it just reminded me of a, of a thing that Alan Bergela says in The Hypothesis. Um, I mean, it's beautifully kind of French, really. Um, you know, he says, of course, primary school is the last place where th this kind of experience should happen. But at the same time, it is the, it is the only place it can happen. You know? So what, what about the, the places where these kind of experiences and these conversations uh, are managed best in your experience? Well, for, for us, of course, the, the, the best place to watch a film, a complete film, is, of course, the, the movie theatre. So, of course, and it's the best place to start the conversation. We already have the experience that the dialogues you start in the, in the movie theatre just after the screening, also with this first moment that you feel like very affected by the film and it's difficult to start, also for adults, I mean, it happens, you feel Oh, it's it's like a journey, and you have to start talking. But then it's great to share this the same room you have been watching the film and and all together. It's for the first moment of the conversation is is great, and we try to have one hour almost of conversation there if it's possible. Of course, sometimes it's twenty minutes or half an hour, but having this time with with the oldest one, it's great, and and it works especially good when you have classes from different schools. I mean, if you have, uh, regarding what Alejandro was saying before, what, if I agree absolutely, uh, when you have a lot of classes from the same school, it's not so rich, but when you have classes from different schools, it's also the discovering of the, of the others, and so it's very rich. And then we try always to have at least a second moment in, in, the, in the school, in the classroom, and then you can follow the conversation, but also you can write or you can draw or you can rewatch excerpts of the film or you, or you can create a poster or a trailer or shooting regarding some scene, whatever. But the, if, if you can have the two moments, the common moment just after the screening and then the other moment more uh, with some days uh, in the middle and another kind of approach to the film, well, it's, it's great. And, and Nuri, Nuri, just to, just to, just to carry, carry on, on, how do you how transition, transition from the end the of the end film, of the, you know, the credit credits. sequence, mm. into, the, into the moment when the audience are ready to uh, in, kind of, to really reflect and, and engage or to give their immediate responses because, you know, mm -hmm. the, there is a hiatus, isn't it, at the end of a film? when yeah. nobody really wants to say anything because it's still it's still working on you and how long does that period last that you know and is it right to force people to begin to articulate mm. um, how do you do that yeah it's a big question because i i also feel very strange in this first moment to have to start talking just after the film because of course in our lives we go outside and then we talk in, in the bar, in the street, whatever, but then you, you are there and you have to start talking. Um, very often I, when, when you 
explain that it's a special moment because we have just like we, we were like uh, in the film 30 seconds ago and now we are outside the film but not really so it's very difficult to talk uh, we explain that and and if there's a big silence when after the first question about sharing like the moments we remember or the feelings we have whatever uh, we we start talking about the fact that it's quite strange and not easy to talk of the film in the same place and in the same moment and then usually there's luckily there's always a student that starts and yeah yeah but I, I, it, it's a really like difficult moment and you always feel maybe today nobody will talk <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah there's this moment but then young people is great i mean with adults maybe nobody will talk but with young people and children they are wonderful but well, yeah, I, we talk about the fact of this difficult. Yeah, it's it just like being in a classroom. When I when I trained to be a teacher, somebody said, "Of course, if you ask a class a question, you have to count to ten, mm. you know, and wait for an answer. And if you count to ten, somebody will always speak, and it, it never fails. You know, ten seconds is a long time, and a lot of pressure." Um, Alejandro, what are you going to you going to add? I, th I think I can basically really just add that Nuria, uh, I totally agree with Nuria, <laughs> the cinema is the only place I feel. Um, I've, I've done seminars in, cin uh, in cinemas that worked really, really uh, beautifully and I've done the exact same se uh, seminar in a school room and even though you could um, you know, put the curtains down and even though they had a small projector and a mediocre sound system, it was never, the experience was just never the same. I think it's kind of, I mean, what else can you say? It's it's obvious, I think, that there is nothing like a cinema experiencing a film. And I also like, I actually really like having conversations in a cinema as well because I kind of feel we, we shared an experience and we shared a space and kind of as long as we sit inside that cinema, it's still our space that we shared with the film. It sounds a little esoterical, but I, I, I feel it's, it's kind of an atmosphere um, that, that is there that um, would, would not, um, that carries into the conversation and its intensity while uh, if you say, okay, so we stop now and we go to the seminar room next door, I think there's an intensity uh, that, that, that goes away. Um, yeah, and, and, and regarding the question of how to start a conversation after a film, I think often I just say nothing um, and just stand there and wait because it's kind of clear that what is happening now is that we talk and then I sometimes I just wait and look at them and I agree with what Mark has said, wait, you know, count. Um, and and if you've done it a couple of years, you you lose the nervousness that nothing will happen. So at one point, you know, someone will say something. I try not to say something uh, as the first person, I think, as a teacher. It's a good principle. Charlotte. Yes. Um, of course, I, I agree that the cinema experience, of course, is, is fantastic and you have to be in this room together and you should definitely have some kind of discussion in there. But, but I think also that if it's possible to go home and have discussions uh, afterwards or the day after, it will change the conversation. And I think more students will have ability to think and express themselves because I don't think all 400 people in that room will come up with their opinion. So that's my, I think, the, the limit there, that there are children who just do not feel comfortable about talking in those big groups. So I think the, the luxury situation is, of course, to have to begin the discussion there, to be in the space together, but also allowing some children to take their time to think and find out what they really feel and then have a possibility to discuss in smaller groups. Um, and when it comes to very uh, young children, I often hear their educators talking about the best discussions happen on the bus on the way home, mm. uh, more than in the, because they're so hungry or they are so whatever, I mean, if they are really young. Um, uh, 
But I think it's lovely to think that cinema can be shared many, many places. We talk about the classroom or the cinema hall, but if you go out in the world, people see uh, cinema many different places, in villages, in communities, elsewhere. So, and that also works. I mean, again, I think it depends on the, on the space you create for them, if they feel welcome, and uh, if they feel comfortable to be able to express themselves and, and be there. So, so I think I also pay attention to the other kind of discussions you, you can have in the classroom after the screening, because I think it's, it's two different things. And it's, combine that's good. and make the best. That, that, that you just re reminded me, Charlotte, in the journal, we've also published uh, in, in one of the recent issues a, a, a very lovely account of, a, of a, a cinema club in Bulgaria, uh, written by Ralitsa Asanova, who was interviewing the teacher who ran the club. Um, and, and it's an account of it, just just using a classroom um, and, and built, uh, which had dark walls, so they needed to build a screen, and they built a screen by having lots of paper, small pieces of paper, and the, chil the, the children made themselves, and they made their own screen. So you, they built a, essentially built a cinema in a classroom. It's a it's a kind of magical story about how cinema can be created anywhere. It doesn't have to be in a in a ready-made movie theater. Um, we we said uh, that. We, and I just want to say, Mark. Yeah. My, no, it was just a, I, I was in a kindergarten the other day, and they took all their screens out of the house. They took them into their, their they have a very big area or playground. So they put them in the trees or in the little huts. So And then they see films in small groups in these little huts. They have very big screens. It's, they are wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that's another kind of yeah. discussion room, you can say, yeah, for the three years old. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, we, we, we said we'd, we'd have an hour, which, uh, which we have. Uh, we, we've got to, to three o'clock. I, I think it's been, a, it, it's been a lovely conversation. I've, I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Um, so thank you very much, Alejandro. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, thank you, Nuria. Um, and to everybody else, anybody who's going to watch this afterwards, then we hope you enjoy uh, what, what uh, we had to say. But, but that you read the journal, that you meet um, Miriana's article and other articles, and that you carry on those conversations yourselves. Um, I think if we uh, we're going to stop recording at this point, Jamie. Do you want to?